Uh, regardless, Jeremy, there is a lot of uncertainty out there, but you do feel confident enough to go and give us a buy, hold, and sell, which we always appreciate. Now, mineral resources is the buy. Now, we know the yeah. lithium tailwinds. Also, it's got that iron ore division. What do you like about it at this juncture? Yeah, both, in fact, and we like it now. And I would say that a lot of the stocks, we, we love top quality resource stocks, but uh, predominantly we invest in industrials. And um, uh, I would say that we, when we say a buy on mineral resources, we could turn around very shortly and sometimes sell it because I do think that uh, beyond buying and holding a stock like mineral resources, it's a wonderful trading stock and we think it's a good time to be an owner of it. So um, you can buy it with... Um, uh, both lithium and iron ore as good tailwind businesses which are growing. We think that lithium story is becoming better and better and they know between uh, Chris Ellison and Mark Wilson, a very good management team that uh, you know is put together with strong balance sheet, the right sort of investments. That 5% play on global lithium is a small investment for mineral resources, but it offers a fair bit of upside. And, and we like businesses that do that, which make an investment and grow their investment as they gain confidence in it. They look inside the business and understand it. And we think that's going to become a really quite significant EBIT part of MIN overall. And um, and yet, you know, we're pretty happy with the strong balance sheet and the iron ore business as well. So it's a buy for us today and, uh, and a hold for a while, but a trading stock that, you know, we or others could look to sell when the time is right and it may be, 60, $62 or something in that order, but it's a buy today. Yeah, something for everyone in that particular stock as well. And it is interesting because of the low grade iron ore that it does have on its books is that it does present these opportunities and it's a little bit more volatile and screens a bit cheaper as well. In the broader lithium space at the moment, what do you make of some of the valuations out there? Because we're seeing Tesla shares, of course, of like rocketing higher, like that uh, the car circle in the earth somewhere at the moment. Uh, what do you make of the valuations there? Oh, look, there's certainly uh, mass excitement, which is producing some lofty prices. But, you know, you have to be careful how you play this. And I think, you know, typically we like to go on the large scale um, or spread with small parts. And, and that might sound like hedging the bets in, in either way. But you can't, you know, you can't go and pick one um, pre uh pre-production explorer and hope that you're going to get it right because you, you're not just dealing with the metal risk um, and commodity price risk, you're dealing with a number of other risks, including you know, operational and mineral exploration risks. So, uh, you know, play it by all means, careful with your capital. It's certainly not safe or easy, but there's a really positive longer term thematic. And I think from an investment point of view, um, knowing you know how to keep your parcel size appropriate is the key to investing in the lithium space right now.